Now, I once heard my mentor say, Paul, I can show you how to get rich quick. And my eyes were like, whoa, okay. You've got my attention, my ears pricked up. And I was like, okay, tell me, how can I get rich quick? He says, I can show you how to get rich quick, well beyond your wildest dreams in 10 years. And I remember going, wait a minute, I thought you said get rich quick. And then he said to me something that really was impactful for me. He says, Paul, 10 years is going to pass like this. It's going to pass in a flash. But most people don't have the resilience to go through 10 years of business, to go through 10 years of trials and tribulations, to go through 10 years of obstacles, problems, challenges, shit happening. Because in 10 years, you will have gone through a number of different cycles. Let's say you do stumble across something that is get rich quick. Let's say you just stumble across something, right? And some money comes in. How can you make that money turn into more money? How can you make that actually expand and grow? How can you continue to make that money, make more money and so forth? Well, you can't if you're relying on something that's here today, gone tomorrow. You can only do that through real wealth building, wealth creation strategies through running real business and investing in the right things, things that are going to produce you a return. When you're writing down a business plan for your new venture, it's all roses, it's all a bed of roses, it looks great, it looks awesome, there's no any, any hint of failure in there, there's not even a hint of trouble in there and what could go wrong, it's all with the wrong perception of guaranteed success and we know that in business lots of things are going to come your way and you should not look to avoid those you shouldn't look for the shortcut to get away from those because it's through those that you grow as a person and that's when you will have generational wealth that's got to be the goal that's got to be the goal to have generational wealth build wealth beyond your wildest dreams that you thought could never be possible and you can only do that by going through the learnings the lessons learned being in business. What I see today with a lot of people who are uh, just one person working in a business or they might have you know a, a business partner or they may have a couple of employees. They all tend to fall into the same category of spending the same amount of money they're making. They make seven thousand pounds this month, they spend seven thousand pounds this month. They make nine, they spend nine. They pay themselves more when they make more and they pay themselves less when they make less. When I say pay themselves less, they basically try and take as much as they possibly can and bounce bills. I see it all the time. And this is the problem with that. I see this time after time in the property game as well. In property, you can make big bucks by doing deals. Some people go out and do flips and can make 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand on a single flip. So when someone goes out there and makes 30 grand on a flip and it's their first deal, and it drops into their bank account, they're sitting there thinking, wow, I've just made 30 grand. What can I do with that? Great, I'm gonna go and go on a holiday for a week to Costa Rica. It'll cost you a lot more than, than five grand. That's five grand, your 30K just disappeared straight away. And then you go, great, well, I need to, you know, get some new clothes. I need to give this person some money. I need to pay off some of these debts. I need to do this, I need to do that. You know, I need to get a new car. Before you know it, you're falling into the instant gratification mode of taking before you actually have truly earned it. You're running a business. And I started to realize that for every time that I spend the same amount of money that's coming in month after month, that's hemorrhaging my growth. So I got quite strict with myself and said, okay, I'm gonna pay myself a salary. And do you know what? Still to this day, I pay myself a set salary. What I should have done is, what I always recommend to this day, is paid myself a simple salary. You know, not even, it didn't even have to be simple because I was making a lot of money. I could have paid myself 10 to 15, 20,000 pounds a month. You know, that's a lot of money. I mean, for a 25 year old, that, that's a lot of money. Reality, I should probably pay myself less. I should probably pay myself 5,000 pounds a month because at that age, you know, I was making a lot of money and I was spending it. 
You know, I was spending it on stupid things. In fact, I don't even remember half the things that I was buying. I was squandering money. I was borrowing money to, to everybody and anybody would ask for it and never ask for it back. I was buying, you know, everything, stupid things, you know. I would squander that money when I should have looked at, okay, let me pay myself a salary. I can go and blow my brains out and have all these cool things later on in life. Let's stay focused right now, pay myself a salary, a salary that I could have comfortably paid could have been a really big salary. I could have taken a hundred thousand pounds a year and the business would still have thrived. So I could still have paid myself a nice salary and more importantly, bring on employees, bring on staff, grow. Or number two, and you know, invest in more marketing, invest in systems and invest in a proper structure. And this is the thing that I keep on saying to people, once you do your first deal and 20, 30 grand drops in, the temptation is going to be there to just go and spend that money, you know, because you want to go and buy things and why not go on a holiday because you think you deserve it. But the truth of the matter is, is that we need to get a pipeline, we need to get consistency, we need to get some predictability of cash flow in your business, you need to get that income. So if your, if your financial freedom number is two and a half thousand pounds a month, then you need to do enough deals to basically have six months income. So you've got two and a half thousand pounds you can draw down each month and the money that's left over, put it into your marketing, you know, put it into to, you know, staff, put it into you know, resources and, and, and structure and systems. I would, in, I would buy things. I would put money into my car. I'd put money into fuel. I would pay for my bills. I would pay for the gas and electricity. I'd pay for my rent. I would pay for whatever the things that I was. I was paying all of the bills. I was paying everybody. I was paying the shops for my clothes. I would pay everyone. And then I'd have nothing left over. I'm sitting there thinking, why am I paying everything out? Whatever money comes in, I'm paying everything out. And this is why most people live month to month, paycheck to paycheck, because they don't pay themselves first. They pay someone else. Now, you don't comprehend that, you don't get that, because most people see, see what they see as, I've got bills to pay, I've got things to do. Now, sure, the first and foremost is that if you've paid all your bills and you've got no money left over, then you're living out with your means. You need to scale back. Maybe you need to you know, scale down and look for a cheaper house where the mortgage is less. Maybe you need to look for uh, you know, rent if you're renting, rent somewhere that's less. If you've got the car that's costing you four or five hundred pounds a month that you've got on, you know, a, a, a lease or you've got on, you know, um, HP, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when most people go to get a, a car, to go and buy a car, they don't go by, I can afford to pay X amount. No, they say, how much is my monthly payments going to be? Ah, it's only going to be 400 pounds. I can get, I can qualify to get this car at 400 pounds a month. Now you're no longer looking for the car that you can actually afford. You're now looking, can you afford 400 pounds a month? And the likelihood is you can't, because it's not just 400 pounds, it's the maintenance, it's the fuel, it's all of that stuff. Clothes, we can all clothe ourselves with normal stuff, but what happens is we end up spending money in excess, trying to fit in, trying to buy the best possible brands. And I'm all for that, but people do that before they pay themselves first. And what do I mean by paying yourself first? Well, what my mentor taught me, he says, Paul, pay yourself first a minimum of 10% to start off with. So if you've got 3,000 pounds coming in, you pay yourself 300 pounds. Now with that 300 pounds, the key here is not to go and spend that money. The key is to invest that money. And he says the best investment you can make first and foremost is investing in yourself. Secondly, invest it in assets. And he says that don't start investing small amounts into assets until your 10% starts to become a lot more. And the way that you can build that up so that you can pay yourself a 10% and it can be a lot more than you're paying yourself just now is by obtaining knowledge so it can allow you to actually get more promotions if you're working in employment, or it allows you to go and do a thing that's going to produce more income. 
It's going to give you the knowledge in sales. It's going to give you the knowledge in property and education. That's what he was telling me at the time because that was my business property. You know, get educated, learn new strategies. And once you in invest that money in yourself to start off with, what that's going to do in return, when you apply that, is going to increase your income. Hey, if you're going to get a promotion, you're going to get a promotion and guess what? Normally what comes with a promotion is a wage rise. And that means you can start paying yourself more. I got aggressive at 22 years old, old that every time money came in, I wasn't paying myself just 10%. I was paying myself 30% and I was putting that 30% into me, educating me. I was my number one investment. You are your number one investment. And when I started to invest in my education and knowledge, I started to apply that. And all that kept on doing was help my bottom line. Or I should say my top line. My top line, your bottom line is what's left after you've been spending your expenses and stuff. But let's talk about increasing the top line. I started to increase my top line. So I went from making, you know, £2,000 a month to £5,000 a month to £10,000 a month and, and beyond. So by the age of 23, you know, I'd already became financially free. But financially free for me was £2,500 a month. And then 23, it just started to compound because I got aggressive with this. The discipline was created of paying myself first.